Baptism is the very first sacrament that we receive, the sacrament that launches us into a whole series of sacraments through which Jesus Christ extends his salvation to us. Baptism addresses the fundamental problem of alienation. Alienation from God. Alienation from each other. Alienation even from our very selves. All of this alienation and the self-destruction that comes with it is caused by sin, both the sins of our ancestors and our own personal sins. In this episode, we will examine what baptism is and how we are baptized into Christ's death and resurrection. The fall of Adam and Eve shows us the consequences of sin. Turning away from God causes suffering and death, both spiritually and physically. Originally, the Lord God formed a man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. But when Adam and Eve sinned, they knocked that breath of life out of us. Death is the result. And even before we physically die, sin mars us makes us dusty, makes us dirty. We are dust, and to dust we shall return. The Christian practice of baptism is a physical washing that cleanses us and brings about spiritual rejuvenation. Baptism physically washes us and spiritually breathes new life into us. Jesus brought about the Christian practice of baptism in three stages over the course of his earthly ministry 2,000 years ago. Before Jesus came, some Jews practiced certain ritual washings to bring about ritual purity. John the Baptist urged people to undergo a ritual washing called baptism in order to signify their conversion away from sin. Jesus himself received this baptism from John. But unlike everyone else, he did not receive it in order to signify his conversion away from sin. After all, Jesus did not inherit original sin, and Jesus never sinned. Rather, Jesus received baptism as a sign of his solidarity with us sinners, and as a sign that he was sanctifying the earth's water to be used in a greater sign, the baptism that he would give. The second stage in Christ's institution of baptism was Christ's passion and resurrection. It is in the Lord's cross, an empty tomb, that we find the foundational power by which baptism saves. The link between the passion and baptism is described in St. John's Gospel. One of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. It's rather strange that water would come out with blood. That was a sign that Christ's sacrificed blood gives its salvific power to the water of Christian baptism. Thus, St. Paul says in his letter to the Romans, chapter 6, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Christ's death and resurrection form the foundation for our own transformation from death to life. The sacrament of baptism is the grave by which we symbolically die with Christ and then rise from the grave to Christ's new life. The third stage in the history of Christian baptism is Christ's command that all be baptized. In St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, Jesus tells the apostles, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The desired extension of baptism to all human beings is also found in the statement of Jesus to Nicodemus in St. John's Gospel, chapter 3. Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. This biblical history of Christian baptism has been continued without interruption in the history of Christ's Catholic Church down to the present day. 
We see this union between Scripture and the Church's tradition even in the Bible. On the day of Pentecost, St. Peter preached to the assembled multitude and said, Repent and be baptized. And since the time of Christ, believers have responded to this call to turn away from their sins, approach the waters of baptism, and receive within themselves the new life of the risen Lord. For readings, podcasts, and more videos like this, go to Aquinas101.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for one of our free video courses on Aquinas. And don't forget to like and share with your friends, because it matters what you think.